Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Alex King. Today is Thursday. It is March the 12th, 2020, 4 p.m. New York time. Wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And uh, we're happy to be doing a Thursday show. A little unhappy because uh, Daniel can't join us. They're just doing so much hammering and pounding there that he can't even hear himself. So, you know, <laughs> we'll just have to carry on without him. But we've done that before, Alex. I mean, we got this. This is not an issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. But we'll miss him anyway. We'll see him again next Tuesday. So how are you doing? What's happening in your neck of the woods? you got your unicorn headphones on, so I know things are good, especially with the light flashing. That's always a good clue. But... Yeah, I decided you can't really see the light unless it's flashing, so I'm going to start leaving it flashing now. Ah, okay, okay. Well, that's a good plan. That's good. So how are things? Are you doing okay? Yeah, things are good. I got my allergy shots today, so my arms are super itchy. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the things we look forward to, I tell you. <laughs> I'm just glad I was mindful enough to remember to get my allergy shot today. Okay, okay. That's a good way to look at it. I like that. Because I've been missing out on a couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, well, yeah, you want to be consistent. Yeah. It's Well, you know, it's true with anything. It's true with learning to be a conscious creator, but it's also true with just living life. You want to make sure just... you stick to your plan, you know? Exactly. Yeah, so good stuff. So anyway, we were kind of fishing around for topics and neither one of us told the other what the, uh, what their topic is. So we're just <laughs> going to, we're going to do this blind, which is okay. You know, we're good at that, but tell what, yeah, what, what did you have in mind? You had something in mind for a topic. What was yours? Okay. So I don't know if you remember this story, but, um, my topic today was determination and it came from, uh, uh I don't know how the conversation came up, but my mom and I were talking about the story of the thousand paper cranes. Oh, okay. Why don't you reiterate that one for people who may have missed that? Okay, so Thousand Paper Grains, I forget the, the little girl's name. It's something hard to pronounce in Japanese. But um, <laughs> so there was a little girl who uh, was diagnosed with leukemia from uh, radiation from the, the bomb in Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a old legend that if you fold a thousand paper cranes, you are allowed a wish. So oh. her one wish was to continue to live. So she wanted to fold a thousand paper cranes before she died in order, so she could live. Mm -hmm. She didn't quite make it. She made it to 644 and then wow. her family finished right after she died. So, ah, yes, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of the determination you were talking about. Yes. 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 Which is interesting because it, it, it points to what we would not typically call a manifestation story. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't get her wish, so to speak. Right. You know, but, but in the story, they, they they say that she did live longer than she was supposed to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there was that. Yeah. Um, and it, of course, with whenever somebody's passing, from my reading of it, it's always a little bit challenging. I mean, I think for anybody, it's challenging just because of the emotional side of it. Mm -hmm. But just mm -hmm. in terms of understanding how the whole thing works, I find it challenging because of what we've been taught by Abraham that um, people choose when they're going to pass. So mm, it sounds yeah. like kind of a contradiction sort of, you know, on the one hand, she wanted to be able to fold her thousand paper cranes and live. And yet, according to what they told us, she kind of, I don't want to say gave up the ghost. That sounds really rude, but no, she, she kind of just, she just didn't make she, the deadline. <laughs> she didn't make the deadline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After 600 or so. Which yeah. is, you know, so, I mean, I guess if we believe what Abraham's teaching us, then she kind of changed her mind partway through the project. I feel like she may, she might have. So it's, I mean, th that's challenging. That That's yeah. not an easy thing. You know, yeah. that, it's going to be a, it's going to be hard for a lot of people hearing a story like that and say, well, yeah, but she didn't get her wish. Yeah. Or did she? Maybe, it, you, maybe towards the end, she was just one piece. Okay. Well, that's possible. That's possible. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what, why did you bring that one up? What's, what does that, I mean, obviously she was determined, but was there more to it than that? No, I was just thinking of like, what a great manifestation story that is. Because she was able to make her, her life longer. She was able to s sustain her life by doing that project and staying focused on this thing that she wanted to get. Yes. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is true. I mean, if you don't follow through, you never get there. Facts. It's, it, it's something my grandfather tried to teach me about golf. He says, you know, when you're on the putting green, you know, you try to hit the ball at least to the hole or farther. If you hit it short, you can't get it in, no matter how accurate it is. God bless you. 
no matter how accurate, no matter how straight it is, you can't get it in the hole because it just didn't get there. Mm-hmm. You know, so you have to follow through. You have to get all the way to the hole. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true for anything else in life, whether we are consciously creating, um, whether we are, you know, just trying to do a basic mundane task with a goal attached to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, or whether we're trying to stifle a sneeze, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> it tickles. <laughs> but yeah, the determination is pretty important. There's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Back, I'm, back. I'm asking myself, does it fit in with what I have in mind for a topic? I'm not sure. It might. We, we always find a way to wiggle around it. <laughs> we usually do. But this one's yeah. going to be, this one's a pretty challenging one. Mm-hmm. This one's going to kind of, you know, test our muster, so to speak. Ooh. Because... Even though we counsel people, pay, don't pay attention to the news and, you know, mm-hmm. stay on what you like and what you, not on what you don't like and so forth. Today, especially all of the conversations going on, all the news, all of the non-news conversations are about the coronavirus. Yep. Everything yeah. is coronavirus right now. Oh, you, you ain't lying about that. And, you know, when something becomes that big of a deal, I think it's something we need to address. From a law of attraction perspective. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. So, I mean, it's not something we would normally want to talk about in any great detail because we like to Mm -hmm. try to stay on stuff that feels good. But, you know, this is this is important. It's important stuff. And I think the impetus for me was when a very good friend of mine had a conversation with me just the other day. um, And she's a law of attraction practitioner. um, Mm -hmm. Actually, she understands LOA pretty well. And. She was asking me, well, what do you think about what's going on with this coronavirus? Mm -hmm. I told her, well, I actually try not to spend too much time focusing on it because I don't want to attract it into my life or to the lives of anybody I care about. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to, you know, I'll take basic precautions, you know, washing your hands. That makes sense. You know, I don't, I'm not a a germ phobe like the uh, germaphobic chief, but uh, I, you know, (laughs) I, I try to, you know, do just basic cleanliness, just, you know. I, I mean, I, I'm, I feel bad for the people who weren't washing their hands before this. Like, what are we all doing in life? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got out the can of Lysol for the first time in about a year and a half. And right, right. Down, you know, mm-hmm. and just basic stuff like that. Yeah. Not in a way that bought into any of the hype or any of the angst. There's a lot of angst, a lot of fear. You can hear oh, yeah. fear in people's voices. You can read it and what they're posting online. There's a mm-hmm. lot of fear. And I was trying not to buy into any of that. And, and I'd say largely succeeding. Okay. But I'm having this conversation with my friend who is a conscious creator, a deliberate creator, as I would, I would term her anyway, and uh, mm-hmm. who's going pretty good about this stuff. And it was pretty clear to me. I mean, she was being low key about it, but it was kind of getting to her oh, the whole okay. thing. And mm-hmm. the way she was expressing it was, okay, well, I understand not, um, not wanting to pay a lot of attention to it, but what about for people who are at risk? You know, people who mm-hmm. have preexisting conditions of various kinds, maybe they're sick mm-hmm. in the hospital, maybe, um, they're elderly, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, there's a Compromised variety of things. Immune systems. Yeah. All kinds mm-hmm. of stuff like that. Um, well, what about for them? I mean, sh- shouldn't we be doing something to help them out? And I mean, it kind of caught me off guard, but it also kind of rang through to me because I said to myself, well, yeah, I mean, they are truly responsible for themselves, but I we was are just going to say that, but we're also responsible if we care to, mm-hmm. you know, to t- be helpful in a way that is, I think, consistent with ourselves, consistent mm-hmm. with, with what we know works from a law of attraction mm-hmm. perspective. Um, and of course, one of the best ways to do that is to be positively mindful about outcomes, thinking healthy thoughts and, you know, wishing everybody uh, speedy recoveries who do get sick and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I pointed out to her that already we know something like uh, 15% of people who um, get the infection actually manifest symptoms. The other 85% don't. So it's, right. act- I mean, the way I'm looking at it is it's actually pretty good. I mean, it means mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. 85% aren't going to get sick. Right. So, you know, we're not talking like the Spanish flu at the end of World War One. This is right, something that's right. much, much more manageable. Mm-hmm. Um, will there be people who will succumb to it? Already they have. So clearly yeah. that's that's happening, you know, and mm-hmm. the numbers are, are pretty substantial. So, yeah, you know, it, it's definitely a concern. But I also thought to myself, you know, it's not like I go to the nearest senior citizen center every week and sneeze on everybody. 
Right. <laughs> You're you know, doing your part. <laughs> I, I, I've been doing my part all along. And right, I think most exactly. people do. Most mm -hmm. people do. I mean, there are some people who just, you know, show no concern for anybody else. I'll grant you mm. that. But I think most people are pretty responsible about stuff like that. Yeah. You know? I so beyond that, and I kind of asked her this, and she tried to give me an answer, but it was not really clear. Um, I asked her, what else do you want us to do? I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of made light out of it because of the way I, I said, you know, yeah, well, I, yeah. I wasn't going to sneeze on everybody, right? <laughs> And and she got that. She understood mm -hmm. that. But I, I got the sense that she was still kind of troubled by the whole thing. So I figured mm -hmm. this is a good topic. This is something to bring up. So Yeah, definitely. You, you kind of hinted at what some of your views are, but talk about it a little bit. Where where are you sitting on this whole coronavirus thing? Um, I'm also not trying to think about it. Not trying to not trying to manifest it in my life and again the people I care about either. And trying not to make a big deal out of it because I feel like it's just a glorified flu is like my nurses were telling me that more people are dying from the actual flu than the coronavirus at this point. Um, really? I hadn't heard that one. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. 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 That's the same. You, everyone's worried about the coronavirus and you really need to be worried about the flu. <laughs> like That's really wild. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, certainly too, missed that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which and is the, surprising. The, they, they usually find all the different ways to scare you and they miss the big one. That's really interesting. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's because you know? the big scary thing is the coronavirus now. So I you got to so. focus on that. So Yeah. 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 So the uh, on the other hand, I have been more mindful of of where hand sanitizer is when I go to the doctor's offices, and more mindful of uh, door handles. So I'm oh, doing by the way, I don't know if you heard, but hand sanitizers mm -hmm. are out. It's oh, soap and yep. water. It's uh, soap and well, water. I've been doing soap and water anyway, but yeah, so just when go. I'm in the doctor's office, I'm like, because I don't know where <laughs> everybody's been. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. But that's about as as extreme as I'm gonna get is um door handles and. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you do you get the same sense that I do that people you know and care about are starting to feel emotionally connected to this thing? Uh, I know Kenny definitely is. He's he's he is. but he's a conspiracy theorist, so like he <laughs> jumped on this faster than I don't even know what. Like <laughs> he was like, oh oh, it's the Illuminati trying to kill all the uh. uh. The, the what the royal bloodlines that's what it was i was like oh geez here we go the royal bloodlines okay <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was like right. who is considered in these royal bloodlines he's like the rare the rare blood types of like, all right okay so in other words that includes you um well he's got an even rarer blood type the one really? that comes that yeah allegedly it comes from space that they just found this out a couple maybe a year ago last year sometime okay mm -hmm. so you both rare blood types Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Different blood types, but rare blood types. That, yeah. that, 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 that's, you know, rare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with that one all by yourself, did you? <laughs> yeah. It was a toughie. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the Daily Dose of Happy, so we got to find some ways to laugh this stuff off, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that is a big yeah. part of it. It, mm -hmm. it is also, I mean, if, if we can put the angst aside, long enough and look mm -hmm. at some of the news stories it is kind of laughable some of it oh yeah yeah you know um here in connecticut of course anybody in connecticut is interested in in the yukon huskies women's basketball team coached by gina oriema and gina was quoted uh by a reporter who asked him about the new american athletic conference policy and he said mm -hmm. oh don't even don't even let me get into it before mm -hmm. the guy could even come up with a question. Don't even don't yeah. let me get into it. Because yeah, there it we go. Out, I like that attitude. It turned out what the policy was that after the game, the players weren't allowed to shake each other's hands. Ah, uh, you know, I knew you were going to say that. And, and he said, now, these girls have been, you know, slamming bodies against each other for 40 minutes, but they're not allowed to shake hands. Yeah, with, with sweat. With sweat, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah. And, and I have to say, he's right. It's yeah. pretty laughable. That's you know, mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yeah, but I agree. Now, on the more serious side, almost all of the major sports stuff is getting canceled. Yeah, they just canceled the whole NBA season. The NBA season That's has been okay. canceled. The rumors are Major League Baseball spring training is going to be canceled. The mm -hmm. NCAA mm -hmm. tournament currently is down to having the teams only with no fans, and they're talking about canceling that as well. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. National Hockey League is talking about canceling. Um, national soccer also canceled. Wow. Yeah, it's it's like it's an epidemic. <laughs> 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 All right, that's two for two. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but it shows just how much people are taking this seriously. It's becoming a yep. political football in the presidential campaign. Mm-hmm. It's beca- it's well, it's of course it's going to be a political football in general. So Congress and and the White House are fighting over it. I mean, yep. it's just and it, it's just getting really really big. A lot of people. I mean, people are talking now. There's a new phrase. What do they call it? Um, self-imposed. Um, what do they call it? Uh, where you uh, keep yourself away from everybody else. What's that called? Oh, um, self-quarantine. Quarantine, yeah. Self, self-imposed yeah. quarantine. You know, so mm-hmm. it's almost like a hashtag these days because of how much that's popping up all over the place. I, well, no? I'm going to hashtag it anyway. Well, there you I've go. I've been doing yeah. that for 12 years. so <laughs> You're an expert at it. Exactly. I was like, mm-hmm. babe, we'll just stay home. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in fact, my friend even said she was concerned about, you know, what happens with supply lines. And I think what she yeah. meant is like foods and so forth. Right. And honestly, that doesn't uh, concern me at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, I understand how the fear comes into it. Mm-hmm. I just have a really good understanding of how strong the supply lines are. There, there's a lot of redundancy built in, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. a whole lot of redundancy. It would take it would take much more like the Spanish flu of World War One to put them at risk than the yeah. coronavirus. And and even then it'd be like Spanish flu on steroids in order for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it would have to be like, you know, 80% of the population in bed before it's an issue. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I don't see that happening. So I don't know. I'm concerned because there's only two bridges that'll get you on and off this peninsula I'm on. So <laughs> if they shut those down, I mean, toilet paper is already scarce as it is. Like <laughs> Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, apparently it's all been cleared out of off the shelves in the UK. And, yep. Uh, yep. And Japan. And Japan as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It kind of makes you wonder, you know, what are they going to do with it all after the crisis is over? But whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could make jokes, but I think I'll avoid that one. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what... I mean, if you were approached by a friend who was expressing the same kinds of things that my friend was saying, what would you say to her? Stop stressing it. Otherwise, you're going to bring it into your life. And if she agreed, which she did, because I said the same mm-hmm. thing, and she agreed, but she was still upset about it, and she was clearly you know, wanting to talk about it, what would you say? It's fine to talk about it. You have until midnight to whine about it. Why midnight? Because that's my cutoff. Because oh. after midnight, that's tomorrow Alex's problem. Oh, okay. So okay. It's not it's not gonna no, not gonna so, not gonna carry it over to the next day, that's why. So a little compartmentalizing. Yes, exactly. Why compartmentalizing? Why is that useful to you? I don't know. It just makes it easier to organize things. Like I have to put things where they need to be and try to be mindful enough to leave them there. Because mm. otherwise I'll stress about everything every single hour of the day. That's true, because, I mean, you're really an expert on this because you you deal with anxiety as an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and Mm -hmm. that's really what we're talking about here, isn't it? We're talking about anxiety. Yeah, basically. Worldwide anxiety. Yeah. This is is everybody else living Alex's life for a few days. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hopefully it's only a few days. (laughs) Well, they've also, um, Donald Trump, the president, um, canceled flights from Europe. So, and that's, yeah, they closed down the borders. Yeah. 30 day period. Well, actually there's a humorous side to that too. I don't know if you heard (laughs) this part. Uh -uh. Um, He didn't uh, blanket all of the UK with the prohibition. He blanketed Mm -hmm. most of the UK, except for certain areas that have Trump resorts. Of course. That's a true story, (laughs) by the way. I didn't make that one up. <laughs> really? Oh my god! I don't even know how Trump resorts are a thing. Like, who's out there staying at one? Like, oh, well, apparently they're, they're he, not because apparently they're in financial just difficulty. For, yeah, he built them just for him, so he has he doesn't have to pay wherever he goes. Yeah, well, he wants the taxpayers to pay for it, and that's another issue. But we won't go there. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, <laughs> but still, it's funny. I mean, it, let's be honest; it's a funny thing. You know, he he wanted to close the border for everything except for going to a Trump resort. Like, oh, yeah. really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man you just have to roll the, your eyes at that one the good news is flights are super cheap right about now yeah well that's another thing that's going on this is affecting the stock market the stock market over the oh, last yeah. month and a half it's down mm-hmm. 25% over the last month and a half yeah with my a, mom said Netflix was at like $5 a share the other day mm-hmm. yeah it, everything is, is being hit the airline sta- stocks you mentioned the airlines they mm-hmm. crashed 
I mean, wow. some, of, some of the European stocks are down 30, 40%. I was going to say hashtag airline crash, but you know what? That's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, start, we'll, we'll try to avoid those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about it for a bit, but we also have to find where the bright side is. So that takes me to the next step. Where is the bright side? How do we find what to focus on instead? Because that's our advice. That's the advice we're giving to our, my real friend, your imaginary friend, and to any listener who might be wondering for a moment how to do this, how to deal with this. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are we going to focus our attention on instead? What are we going to pivot to? I have been trying to balance it out with uh, coronavirus memes. Okay, you're going to have to explain that one a little bit. Why? Why is looking at memes balancing that out? Because they're hilarious, so they take uh, the sting out of it. Okay. For instance, uh, there was one that said, "What? It, what was it? Oh, I hope this coronavirus doesn't keep going into into a." Uh, deer season because then we're going to have coronas with Lyme. Oh, (laughs) jeez. I think that deserves a little rim shot. What do you think? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Deer tick season is very serious on the Cape. Don't play. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that's what we were doing was playing. Yeah. (laughs) But be be very aware. Be very aware. Be aware. aware. Okay. So so we'll play with awareness. Yes. Okay. Wear so, socks so, and check your clothes. <laughs> so, all right. So, there's one meme. Was, were there more like that? I mean, we need a few laughs. Probably there. Are, if 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 I'm going to share something, it's going to be of a comedic nature. So, if it's on my okay. page, then then yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, well, sure. You might as well laugh at stuff. If oh wait, know. I do have another one. Um, oh, how does it start? Oh, we had what did it? It said something about like. Millennials have, don't have a problem with the coronavirus because we've been through Y2K, uh, Zika virus, you know, basically everything. <laughs> You're immune. Yeah, exactly. And then, oh, <laughs> of course, there's all the ones that are showing, like, places that used to chill back in the day when you were a teenager. And it's like, if you've been to this bar, you're immune to the coronavirus. So <laughs> stuff like that, you know. Actually, it's an interesting point because I, I think I read that they aren't sure why that children aren't affected by this, which means the Generation Z kids aren't mm-hmm. being touched, which is really interesting. Yeah, I know. It is interesting. And Considering I say, they go to Petri dishes. Well, yeah, that's true. And yet, nevertheless, they're not being affected. And the first thought that goes to my mind is, well, we all know, because kids have been here less time than the adults have, they mm-hmm. are, in a sense, more connected to source. It, it was a more recent thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that sense, to be connected directly to source and to remember what that's like. I wonder if that's providing some protection. And also resilient to brainwashing. Are they? I feel like at that, at that point, it hasn't uh, quite gotten to them yet. Well, I don't know. I thought it was getting to me pretty good at that age. (laughs) (laughs) Not I, said the cat. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Okay. Well, that would be great. I would love Mm -hmm. that if that were true, if it wasn't getting Mm -hmm. in. Yeah. It's certainly going to be more true, I suspect, for those kids whose parents are enlightened, as we like to call it, aware that, of yep. being a conscious mm-hmm. creator, because they're teaching them how yep. to do this. I mean, I'm thinking of Louis D'Souza, for instance. He's got his two young girls, and he's been teaching them the basic principles of law of attraction, and they've learned how to attract stuff into their lives. You know, they wanted, nice. like, you know, bicycles and so forth, and they're getting them, not through nice. Louis, but through yeah. you know, various, you know, Outside means. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, they're learning the skill. I have a suspicion somebody like that's probably going to be a little bit more resilient. I mean, they're still, yeah, they're like, they're kids. They're still going to be, you know, mirroring the fears of the adults. Mm-hmm. It's still going to happen, but nevertheless, it's got to help some, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah, that, that is good. That's encouraging. I thought of another meme. Oh, what's that? Um, I'm not going to get the coronavirus because I drink Heineken's. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. They're bad. They're out there, but they're bad. <laughs> I, I think that deserves another one. Yep. Oof. So now we're we're both two for two. Just yep. Yep. <laughs> it's a two rim shot day so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a rim shot button. Uh, well, I can send you the file, I feel like. But then, like, I, listen, I have enough files that I got to open during these podcasts. <laughs> well, tell you what, I'll, I'll synchronize to you touching the screen. So, okay, go ahead. Try it again. Look at that long finger. Look at that finger. (laughs) 
It's a little delayed, but we'll work on it. <laughs> That's all right. Well, you know, electronics aren't perfect. <laughs> facts. Facts. Electronics aren't people. They aren't. No. They well, people aren't perfect either, so thank goodness. Exactly. Otherwise, it'd be a really dull place. But yeah. Um, okay. Well, what else can we uh, tell our hypothetical and real friends about dealing with uh, coronavirus? You know, what do you focus your attention on instead? That was the question. How do we? What do we? You, you said memes. Okay, that's one way. What's another way to redirect our attention? Um. Kind of take our well, mind. I'll tell off. you. I'll tell you. Being a hypochondriac does not get you anywhere in life. So. <laughs> Let's just not. Let's just not. We'll, let's just not. Let's we'll just, phone it in and be just, done. Let's collectively cancel the coronavirus and just okay. go about our day. You know, that's an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. That That's not all that far-fetched because I'm no, thinking, for instance, about, you know, group healing. Yeah. You know, there, there are people online who do group healings for mm-hmm. people with, you know, stage four cancer and stuff like yeah. that. Well, why mm-hmm. not? Let's do it for coronavirus. Yeah, exactly. You know, we got all these, I don't know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who are, who have been uh, infected with it and um, people, you know, hundreds of people who are on death's door and so forth. Let's mm-hmm. help them get out of it. I think it just got more serious because now Tom Hanks and his wife are now positive for coronavirus. Yeah, Tom Hanks, Reed Wilson. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, that maybe that helps us give us a point of focus. Yeah, because now it's like, oh, no, not Hollywood. <laughs> They're untouchable. What's happening? <laughs> well, like I say, I mean, we know who they are. Most people know who Tom Hanks is. Most people right. know who it is. You mm-hmm. know, so that gives us somebody to focus our attention on. And yeah. mm-hmm. so it becomes Tom, Rita, and everybody else, you know. Well, he's not even worried about it. I, well, that's a good thing. Yeah. He's like, we have a few cold symptoms. We'll check in in a couple of days. Bye, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the attitude to have. Like, it's not... Is, is like a lot of people that are getting it, at least in the U.S., the people that are getting it are, are surviving. They're just self-quarantining. So there, there are some people who succumb. There have been some deaths. Mm-hmm. but Yes, there have been. But again, they're usually elderly or compromised immune system situ- or smokers. Those people are having problems, too. Uh, to me, it, it isn't even, well, uh, at least it was just people who um, were at risk. That, that to me, isn't even a, a good enough thing. For me, it's that yeah. the number is small. Right. I mean, you know, some countries are, are reporting hundreds of people. I think here in the U.S. it's under 40. Yes, yeah, so it is. Mm-hmm. It, it, it has not gotten, a, you know, a, a, a really bad thing. It's not become really bad. Not that it couldn't. It certainly could. Yeah. With all the attention yeah. that it's getting, with all the negative mm-hmm. attention, the fear that's attached to it, it's mm-hmm. certainly going to get much worse. But yeah. the point is, it hasn't. So yeah, right. you know, there's still time. Mm-hmm. There's still time to turn it around. Um now, I know some people, some listeners are going to think, yeah, but there aren't all that many of us. I mean, we've got a nice listener base. We're up, you know, 600, 650 listeners per episode. Uh, that That's not a big number, though, compared to 8 billion around the planet. You know, Well, that's why you got to tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah, yeah. But also, the reason I bring this up is we should also remember just how powerful consciously creating really is. Mm-hmm. Because if you've got... One of the ways they usually describe it is if you have one person who's focusing on the negative and another person who's focusing on the positive, and they're both related to the same thing, mm-hmm. the one who's focusing on the positive, their efforts are going to be like a thousand times more powerful. Right. Because they're know? at a higher vibration. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, instead of having 650 listeners or whatever, we've got the power of 650,000 or, mm-hmm. you know, something like, like that. that. So, so it's actually a lot more powerful just because of you know, the, the tremendously higher level of power of high vibration stuff compared to low vibration stuff. Mm-hmm. That's encouraging, I think. I agree. Um, and I think there's another piece to it, too. It's mm-hmm. about not feeling like we're responsible for healing the planet. Yeah, yeah. Everyone mm-hmm. is responsible for their own one person. So it's great if you try to do more, but, like, don't hurt yourself. Don't don't fry your brain. Yeah, and, and if we're taking care of ourselves and if we're helping some others... Mm-hmm. Like, what if, what if we actually did help, say, a half a million people? Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So that to me is the way to look at it is, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to, we're going to focus on helping a, a half million people. Okay, cool. And, and we can easy. do that. Nice, easy number. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> if all the people listening to this podcast kind of get involved and, and just take a moment and be mindful and, now, let, let's see if we can agree on the guidelines, how we're going to go about doing this, okay? okay? Okay. I'm recommending that what we do is try to imagine 
all these people healthy okay. and living a happy life and enjoying themselves and virus free and, you know, Tom and Rita back on the set making their movie. I don't remember what the movie was, but whatever the movie is. They it's were an working. Elvis movie. It's an Elvis movie. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So working on their Elvis movie, you know, and mm -hmm. and then kind of expanding that, saying that plus everybody else all getting back to their lives and the things mm -hmm. that they're doing and getting back to their families and their friends and feeling great, feeling wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, that to me is what I would want us to focus on. Yeah, I agree. And I also want to remind people about, uh, I was just uh, watching this. Actually, Louise and I were watching this last night. Um, there was mm -hmm. that film that came out uh, 2002, something like that called what the bleep do we know? Um, a, a young Dr. Joe Dispenza was in it and a few others. One of the things that was mentioned in that movie was uh, the movie was basically about quantum physics and how it relates to health and law of attraction and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And one of, one of the points that they made was that what you focus on where your health is concerned, where everybody else's health is concerned, when you do it in a way that is mindful and that is consistent and, and you, you, you make that consistent effort, you become a very powerful creator. Mm -hmm. And they even, they cited um, a very famous study that we've talked about at times here on the show. It was a, a deliberate attempt back um, 1993, something like that. Uh -huh. A whole bunch of people descended on Washington, D.C. for the purpose mm -hmm. of trying to bring the crime rate, crime rate down for a weekend, I think it was, to like you know, oh. 25% lower. Mm -hmm. And they, they publicized it in advance mm -hmm. and the, the local police department heard about it. They poo pooed the whole thing. Um, the, <laughs> you know, the science powers that be poo pooed the whole thing. They came in, they did their thing and the crime rate fell 25%. The number they aimed for. Nice. The number they aimed for. And after that, the police in Washington DC were all on board. They said, well, can we do this again? This is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so proof positive for those who need the proof and there are actually lots of examples of proof out there mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but for those who need the proof there's an example of it. it really when you have numbers of people focusing on putting out that high vibe feeling for the benefit of others it does help it does actually yeah. have a very positive impact mm -hmm. you know um, I'm trying to think what the uh, the name of the woman is who wrote the book The Power of Eight McTaggart Lynn McTaggart I think her name is um, I think that's what her name is. She has these regular events. There are a number of people who do these regular online events. You can join Facebook groups and other kinds of groups mm -hmm. to on a regular basis. Everybody gets together and they kind of pray over somebody who's got cancer or somebody who's got this, that, or the other thing. And they've had tremendous results. Um, uh, well, we had, uh, Dr. Joe's lead, uh, team, team leader, Kim mm -hmm. Lee Voda on Tuesday. And she was talking mm -hmm. about people who had just come to the workshops and engaged in the meditating and listened to the workshops and so forth. And they, they came in a wheelchair and they end up walking out on their own, under their own power yep. a week later, you know? Mm -hmm. So clearly that this kind of intense activity works. There's a lot of evidence to support it. Right. So I, that's what I suggest. I suggest we just focus on, you know, we, we just do it right now kind of as we're talking. So mm -hmm. we're imagining all of these people who are currently well, let, let's focus on the ones who are really struggling, the ones who are mm -hmm. having trouble, you know, their, their breathing is restricted. There aren't enough ventilators going around, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some of them are maybe at that store and we're, we're focusing on them right now, getting better really fast, amazingly mm -hmm. fast. The doctors are amazed at how fast they're getting better. Mm -hmm. Right. And as they're getting better, they, the stories are starting to come out. Yeah. And they're getting up out of bed and they're getting back to their lives. And the doctors are like, you know, taking measurements to find out, okay, how did, what, did they develop like a new immunity? What happened mm -hmm. here? Is this something we can reproduce? They're starting to get I say we're all that. skipping down the street just in time for spring. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Spring's around the corner. And it's an early spring this year because not much yeah, snow is going on in, in March here. Hashtag global warming. Which is unusual for this area. <laughs> I have snow yeah, this time of year. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, yeah, so there, you know, there it is. That's what we, we're focusing on. Let, let's kind of keep that in the back of our minds for the rest of the show. We're just going to keep, you know, going okay. back to that image because that's, it's a powerful image. It's a all right, powerful, cool, cool. powerful little vignette we've created there. All right. Live all these, vignettes. All these healthy people coming out of their sick beds and getting healthy. 
That's a good thing. Little... How do you spell vignette? Hold on. B-I-N. B-I-G-N. B-I-G. See, I had it right the first time. Ah, uh, yeah. B-I-G-N-E-T-T-E. Ah, ha, ha, ha. E-T-T-E. <laughs> Live vignettes. Okay, there good. There you go. So it's included. All right. So that's good. We'll just keep mm-hmm. that one going for a bit. Um, what else can we do for somebody who's still kind of struggling? They're kind of, they, they don't, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're feeling the angst. They're feeling the fear. And I am asking you because you have a lot of experience dealing with that. What are some of your go-to things? What do you do when you're, that fear comes back and you know you don't want to be focused there, but you're feeling it anyway? Distraction is always my number one go-to. Okay. So whatever, so whatever your favorite thing is to do, go do it. Like what? What, what, what are the things you do? Um, the other day, well, I was going to post the other day, nothing's better than eating mashed potatoes while watching Grey's Anatomy in your PJs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Comfort food and comfort shows. That's what I like to do. <laughs> oh, our friend Daniel, while he can't join us because of all the noise, he's actually tuned in. And he, he wrote back saying, those are great. He likes what we were doing there. So. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Hi. Thank you very much. Hello there. <laughs> so, Okay. Eating in your PJs, that's good. Yep, Anything else? Yep. Uh, not watching the news is my not favorite thing to do. <laughs> yeah, this is a good time to turn off the news. It's not like it's yeah. going to tell you anything new that's going to be helpful. The worst part is when I'm about to watch my show and then the president interrupts to talk about it. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm just going to keep fast forwarding until I get to my show. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Got to love All DVRs, right. man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how y'all people are watching live TV like savages with commercials and stuff. I don't know. Um, actually, that's one thing Louise doesn't do much of anymore, so I, I don't know either. Yeah. I can't answer yeah. that one. I mean, I've been brought to the other side, and I can't go back. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I do know some of them. Well, that starts to get down the wrong rabbit hole, but I do know <laughs> there are some of them that uh, – they they won't allow you to fast forward through, but you just have to be selected. only on demand. Only on demand, but on your DVR you can fast forward and rewind. If it's recorded, if yeah, it's recorded. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. See, look at that. We distracted ourselves already. What were we talking about? I forget. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's how you do it, people. <laughs> that's how you do it. <laughs> it's true. Uh, one of the things I like to remember when I'm trying to figure out how to pivot away from something that's tough is I, I like to think about pivoting in a 360 degree circle because you've got 360 mm-hmm. degrees around you. And most of us try to think in terms of 180 degrees, right? So mm-hmm. the thing I'm angry or frustrated or upset or angsting about, you know, getting all anxious about is at zero degrees. It's right in front okay. of me. Mm-hmm. And what most of us try to do is we go to try to go to 180, which is about mm-hmm. the hardest one to go to. You know, yeah, yeah, anything yeah. less on either side is easier. Mm-hmm. And I say that to remind myself, I don't have to go to 180. Right. I can go to 20. I can go to 90. Yeah. I can go yeah, to 235. It doesn't matter, you know, <laughs> just as long as it's not directly back to 180 because that's the hard yeah. one. That's the yeah. diametric opposite one. As long as you're not yeah. at zero, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. So almost anything becomes a valid distraction, doesn't it? As long as it's not on yeah. the topic or if it is on the topic, then it's laughable or some provide some form of release, some kind of way mm-hmm. to let go of it. Mm-hmm. Really I know what goal. Daniel would say. What's that? Distract yourself with an episode of Daily Dose of Happy. <laughs> and how do you do that? By becoming a subscriber. We're going to do subscribers. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a good time to do a promo. Why not? We can do that. <laughs> and it's a good point because, I mean, most of the time what we're talking about are lighthearted subjects. And that is yep. the point to be a, a subscriber. But like we're showing today, we're not afraid to go after the, the tough subjects. No, we're not. No. And the the really great part is every time we do, we find a way to come after it in a way that feels good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is really good for a listener. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, if you're a listener, you can count on every single show. You're going to find yourself feeling better at the end of it. Because mm-hmm. that's what your daily dose of happy is all about. So Exactly. That's our long-winded way of saying become a subscriber if you're not yet a subscriber. <laughs> and it's so easy to do. Just go to the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net. At the top of the page, it shows you how to do it. It actually tells you what to do for your particular device because it actually knows the difference between an Android and an iPhone and a Mac and a PC. It knows mm-hmm. how to tell all those things apart and just walks you through it. Um, some are going to be easier. Some are harder just because of the different devices. But it's still, it'll tell you what to do. And A couple then once of clicks, you, you'll be there. Yeah, usually it's very quick. 
Um, and then everything's coming streaming right to your device every single time that we're publishing, mm -hmm. which is, by the way, how our listenership keeps increasing. <laughs> and that's that's what I love to hear. I love hearing it, too. I love reading. I like doing the, the math and saying, oh, wow, we just went up again. How cool. Ugh, that? Math. <laughs> That's why I'm well, glad you're here so you can do it for me and just tell me what the numbers are because I, I don't math. Well, I don't either, actually. I use a spreadsheet. That's still math. No, let's just plug it in and let the spreadsheet do the, the calculation. Okay. I, don't know what <laughs> I tell it what to do. Okay, you, you have to take this, multiply by that, and divide by that. I can tell it to do that, but then it has to do the hard work. It has to actually calculate it. <laughs> Of course, we kind of left out the other part because most of our subscribers listen to the podcast, but we do have a few on YouTube. The numbers are mm -hmm. starting to pick up a little bit, and mm -hmm. so we should probably explain that part. So tell people how to be a subscriber on YouTube. Okay, so if you go to YouTube, search LOA Today Podcast Videos, and once you see our smiling faces, down below there is a red subscribe button, and next to the red subscribe button yeah. there is a little silver bell. When you click the silver bell, make sure you click all so you always be notified when we are live. And that's it. Very, very simple. So... Yeah, and so now we just encourage people to get that daily dose and find another way to uh, distract themselves every day during this yep. craziness that's going on. So what other strategies can we give people? I mean, these are good ones. I mean, probably most people are going to be able to, you know, get it done with what we're talking about so far. But let's mm -hmm. let's consider for a moment the real the people who are finding it really hard, really, really tough. They just can't seem to distract themselves. The memes aren't making them laugh. What else can we suggest? How, else can How we do memes them? not make you laugh? You're clicking <laughs> on the wrong memes. Oh, man. That's what the internet is all about is the memes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I for people no... who are not being enjoying the memes and are still getting anxious, let me see. What else can we do? Um, well, if you're going to cut yourself off from the world, cut yourself off from the world. So that way you get no incoming static and confusion so you can just make up your own opinion about the situation of course somebody who's this far gone and with their angst is probably playing 80 to 90 percent negative tapes mm, true true okay so what we got to do is we got to get rid of that negative tape ah yeah are you saying that this is a time to be mindful about working on yourself yeah yeah i agree i think i think it is and i think we have to take a page from Daniel's book and do the, the, I like to say random intervals in the day where you can, you can take time to be mindful, but he likes to have his, you know, calculated. But I think being random is better because then you're caught off guard and you're like, well, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me be mindful for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think that's, that's a good job. I've been using Daniel's approach with the scheduled ones and, mm -hmm. I can't honestly say I've been doing 15 minutes each time because then it would be 15 minutes to do the mindfulness, 15 more minutes to deal with the cats, another 15 <laughs> minutes to get back to work, and then 15 minutes to work before the next alarm comes up. So <laughs> I, my, my mindfulness is a little bit shorter than 15 minutes. It's usually like two or three. but Yeah, well, you know, get it in where you can fit it in. Well, that's it. That's mm -hmm. what I look at is, you know, just you, you do what you can. Mm -hmm. You just but you just keep doing what you can and you keep doing it over and over again. I was really impressed with Kim, the story that yeah. she told about how often she meditates. I know. I was like, what? What, are, Twice? what do you, what do you have time to do for the rest of the day? <laughs> I mean, that, that's two and a, two and a half hours out of her day, just meditating. Yeah. That's, I cannot, I can even focus for 30 seconds. I don't know what she's doing for <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes. That is talent. Woo. Well, she's listening to the, uh, you can get the pre-recorded one. He's got a, a pre-recorded meditation you can buy. I think he has. Oh, a yeah. okay. So that's how she's doing it. But even so, that's a but big still, time. That is. You know, that that's if you, why. If, if you want to do it, you're going to do it. I, well, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was saying I was so impressed with the commitment level. That's a great commitment level. Yeah. That, that was definitely impressive. I was like, whoa. It's where I start reminding myself again. It, it it isn't even so much the quantity, how much you're doing, it's how often you're doing it, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's where the the brilliance of what Dan talks about, you know, with the mm -hmm. scheduled reminders is good. If you're doing it all the time that you can throughout your day, the more often that that's the other thing. The more that I've incorporated, the more I've drawn into my life doing mirror work and my little video vignette that I watch and um doing these things during the, you know, every hour throughout the day and so forth, the more I bring them in, mm -hmm. the more I find myself remaining 
I don't know how to call it, sort of subconsciously mindful. Does that right? Make- yes, it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of like you've started a new programming tape in the back of your yep. head, mm-hmm. and it's replacing some of those negative tapes, which is good. And it's that's replacing- exactly what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and it's kind of replacing them with okay, be mindful, be mindful, be mindful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, are you connected? Check yourself. Are you, have you been connected? <laughs> Check your connection. Yeah. Check your connection. <laughs> For me, it's hard. Cause it's like, it's like working out. Like I'm, I'll be on the treadmill and I'm like, Oh, is it over yet? Like <laughs> that's how I meditate. Like how many, has it been 15 minutes yet? Am I done yet? Like, and then you find out only 30 seconds have passed and you've got a way to go. <laughs> well, you should probably have tuned into the show that we did on Monday because Wait, which- Monday was oh, with Louis you wanna. and you own Yeah. 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 Did, did I saw you hear that. It? Okay. I didn't hear it. I saw the thing on the LOA today, um, Facebook group and I was oh, like, oh, she's it. back. Okay. She's oh, back. Yeah. Which is great. I'm loving it. Um, how did it, how did it work out with the, uh, with the cameras and everything? Pretty well. Pretty okay. well. Yep. Everything went out. Okay. On that. Um, okay, she good. had a little trouble with the mic at first, but you know, everyone does at first. Yeah. It just, that just happens, but it yeah. was okay. We got it going. Okay. And good. Um, it, Louis and Yuan are going to be a good mix. Okay, good. Like you and Daniel are a good mix, and, and it's mm-hmm. going to be the same thing with these two. Mm-hmm. Um, in part because Louis's perspective is so different from everybody else's. Mm-hmm. Um, and in part because Yuan brings uh, very much of a scientific perspective, and it's a right, great mix right. because they're both into um health and fitness. They're both mm-hmm. they, they, there's a lot of overlap there, but there's also yeah. a lot of differences. Right, and it was coming out during the conversation. One of the things that we learned pretty early on was that they're very much into the same kind of exercise routine. Oh. Because Louie is a teacher of what is called H-I-I-R-T, and she's a practitioner of H-I-I-T. Okay. H-I-I-T is um, high-intensity interval training. Right. H-I-I-R-T is high-intensity interval resistance training, so basically using a weight of some kind. Okay. What, is, what, is, what was the second one? H-I-I-R-T? Yes. Okay. And what was interesting to me about it anyway was I asked them to describe for the audience, you know, what, what's this all about? And they said, mm-hmm. well, what you do is you just, if you're running, for instance, mm-hmm. instead of jogging and just doing a consistent pace, you run as hard as you can for 30 seconds and then you stop and you just do a little walking pace. Walk. For a bit, yeah. Calm, mm-hmm. calm down. And so when you said, you know, you, you could do it for 30 seconds and you're done. I'm thinking, well, geez, maybe she ought to be doing the high intensity for 30 seconds thing. I'm going to get there. I got to get outside first. Well, the reason that they're, that you want to anyway gave for doing it was if you're doing it high intensity, your metabolism actually stays high longer. Oh, that's a so positive. Then, so you, if you're trying to burn some fat off, that's going to be a quicker way to burn fat off, which I thought was interesting. All right. All right. Yeah. But they're interesting. They were both advocating. In fact, um, Louis is a teacher of it. He apparently has classes that he teaches H I I R T. Oh, excuse so, me. So I thought that was a pretty cool overlap between the two of them. Yeah. I didn't even know about that one going into the show. But. You notice you find your co-hosts that have overlaps. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've missed occasionally, but <laughs> well, I have. I definitely missed it. There was, I can think of one combination in particular that just did not work. But for the most part, yeah. And mm-hmm. and I haven't always known why it was going to work. Right. I just, I, I basically just went with gut impression. Like, mm-hmm. this is going to mm-hmm. work. I yeah. just feel like it's going to work. And it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I agree. I agree. I mean, well, I, I can even think of one that did work. It was a little bit uncomfortable for you because you, you were feeling kind of oh. stepped on at times. I know who you talk about. <laughs> you know, my friend Bill G. And, and Bill's a great guy. And we had some good stuff there. You know, and you were a little bit. It was a little bit tough for you for a bit there, but but, it, on. but the, and the dynamic did work. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. really worked well. The, the, I mean, yeah. it, it was, I'm sure it was easier for you when we changed the schedule around, but nevertheless, it did work. They made for some really good shows. True, very true. Very true. You know, they really did. Mm-hmm. So they got a lot of honesty out of it. Definitely. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. There, yeah. Was, there was a lot of heart on the table in that one. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Remember, remember the, what was it? The anti-vaxxer episode? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, those good times, good times. That well, that almost ties into coronavirus in a way, not quite, but a little almost. bit. A little. That that was another meme I saw. <laughs> it was a picture of this really, really, really skinny person, 
and they were short and then they had pimples and like super long hair and they were like anti-vaxxers during the coronavirus talking about my child never gets sick. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a double rim shot. (laughs) Yes, some up to four. (laughs) Well, technically not even really because I'm just spitting out other people's memes. These are not my memes. (laughs) That's all right. I'm I'm sharing. Most of the, I mean, you've laughed at, you, you've liked a lot of the jokes that I've told and, and oh, yeah. I, you never heard them before, but I, I didn't make any of them up. I mean, these are all jokes that I heard, you know, 40 years ago or something like that. They just hadn't been resurrected yet. Well, that's why they're <laughs> brand new because I'm only 36. So. That's right. So there you go. <laughs> I'm like, no way. <laughs> nah, uh. My mom got me the other day. She tried to play me to China and she was really good. She even surprised herself. She was telling me. Because she asked me what I would want to come back as if I want if I was going to come back as an animal, and oh. I said a dolphin. And I said a dolphin. She said she you wouldn't come back as a porpoise with a purpose. And I said, what's the difference? And she said, well, dolphins have a fin. That's why they're called dolphins. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was like I'm totally mind blown. I'm like, no way. It's just like no, I'm joking. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought you were Google for a second. Stop it. She played me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Moms, man, moms. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> she had me going for like a good five minutes. She's like, "Yeah, dolphins have a fin, porpoises don't." I'm like, "Really? That was who did that? That was smart. I didn't even notice." Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> oh. Hashtag dolphins with a purpose. No, well, that was good. That was a belly laugh. That was really good. <laughs> brought to you by Lafayette King. Well, I mean, belly laugh is what you're going for. You want to throw the stress yep. off of a coronavirus pandemic? Belly laugh. That'll get rid of it. First Definitely. of all, dry, it's great for your um, uh, your resistance, your your physical body resistance. And your abs. And your abs. Yep. <laughs> it's true. It is. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I could get you on to talk about that because I re- recall, like, the first or second year of the show, that was one of the things we would talk about, how, you know, there was a physiological benefit to laughter and yep. it's measurable, detectable. They can, they can actually document it. They can, they can detect from the moment that you laugh to what's happening and healing another part of your body. They can actually track that. It's mm-hmm. pretty bizarre. What was that movie with, with Robin Williams when he would play the doctor that made everybody laugh? Patch Adams. Thank you. Patch Adams. Yeah. Yes. See that that's evidence right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and he was controversial for his time. That's mm-hmm. what part of the story was how controversial right. he was. Um, but yeah, he, and I think he, I think he's, his practice is still going. I'm not sure if he's still around or not. I can't remember. Wait, he's a real person. Shut up. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you didn't know that? I did not know that. I never even oh, watched the yeah. whole movie. I've just known clips. No, Patch oh. Adams is a real person. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Absolutely true. I, I, I gather he isn't quite as out there as Robin was, but I mean, who was yeah. really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's nobody who was out well, there. Well, every Robin. doctor should be Patch Adams then. Yeah. That's, and, that's fantastic. And he has influenced the medical profession as a result. More yeah. and more. I mean, let's be honest. Doctors today are more down to earth than they were, say, 40 years ago Very or something. Very true. Very you know? true. They're, they're, they take a little more time. Well, maybe not in uh, in the more socialized medicine companies, countries, rather. But um to the extent that they can spend time with you, they'll they'll get to know what you're feeling and what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll take time like that. And that it, it happened before, but it, not quite to the degree that it's happening now. So I see that as an influence of a Patch Adams. Not that he was the only one; there were others too. But yeah, in my um, medical experience, being a patient, um, <laughs> <laughs> all my all of my initial appointments with with certain doctors have been at least an hour. Mm, wow. Yeah. And like, well, they'll, they'll tell you and it's like, okay, so this is your first appointment with us? Yes. Okay. We'll be prepared to be here for an hour, hour and 15 if you have to fill out paperwork. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, are you single-handedly supporting the health care industry? <laughs> I mean, people have told me I'm in the hospital so much. I should buy my own wing and just stay there. <laughs> well, I hope you don't do that. It makes it really hard to do podcasts, but. Um... I, 
No, it doesn't. I've thought about this before because when I was sick, <laughs> when I was sick in the hospital, it's all planned, folks. It's all planned. I was like, if I already had it in my head, I was like, if they're going to keep me, I have to podcast tomorrow, so I'm going to need my phone. I'm going to need my charger and my head, my headphones. My I can use my um, noise canceling headphones and just you know tell the nurses don't come in between four and five. <laughs> She's got it covered. I love it. Already, already got it covered. <laughs> I try not to call in if I can help it. If I'm on Wi-Fi, I will call in. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it's it's nice to know you play such a high value on doing the show. That's a good. I thing. do. I love it. I try not to miss a day. I also want to give one more um, shout out. We did this on Wednesday with Cindy Chavez, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but there was a, there was the uh, email that we got from Daniel. Oh Disney. yeah. Not Dan I Andino, responded. But yes. Yeah. In yeah. Fact, you, you were mentioned prominently in it. I, every co-host was. Yes, I know. I felt quite special. <laughs> I, I actually read the first quarter of that. It took like three minutes to read the first quarter. It was a yeah. long email. It was a long email. I just scanned for my name. And then once I saw it, I read it. I read the whole thing. <laughs> I was like, does this even apply to me? Let me find out. Oh, I'm in it. Okay. Let me go back to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's now like, we know what your priority is. <laughs> it's always me, duh. <laughs> you have to be your own main priority, people. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but still, I mean, Daniel was just effusive with yeah. his praise mm -hmm. for all the co-hosts and how much he loved having found the show and mm -hmm. how he kind of stumbled upon the show in the first place and mm -hmm. then found this other LOA show. And I have a pretty good idea which one it was actually. And it was too, I think he said it was too soft. No, and, he said it was too woo woo for him. And, and, well, that's a and, lot. That, and it was woo woo. That's right. Because <laughs> yeah. he was woo woo himself. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he found us and he loved it. Like, whoa, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, that's a, that, that makes you feel good down deep. So that, that email was so warming and so long. And mm -hmm. for so many of us, I figured it had to be mentioned in more than one show. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really yes. Thank you. That. We appreciate it. That was like, yeah, you, you made everybody's week. That's, that's a Yeah, point. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot to get Alex to write you back. I mean, you know, she doesn't do emails. She does. Yeah, not really. Media. No. You know, social so. media and texting is how I do it. So getting her to write an email, <laughs> Daniel, you've done good there, kiddo. Yeah. <laughs> well, he asked me about Supernatural. I couldn't not write him back. I got it. Gotta... Well, yeah. Double, double whammy right there. Not yeah. only is he complimenting you, but he's asking you about your favorite thing to do. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, let me let me help him out. So I, I imagine you um wax poetic about supernatural because that's what I you did. Do. I yeah. I said that um every every show has their ups and downs, but you mm -hmm. know, a lot of the downs are for character development. And as a writer and a consumer, I have to say that you should definitely continue to watch. And with this season being the last season, now is the time to catch up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many episodes are left? Ooh, I don't know because we we're we're still on a break. It doesn't come back till next week. It's been gone for a month and a half. Oh, okay. Um, but I believe there's going to be ten episodes left. I feel okay. I've, if I'm correct, yeah. Okay, so the countdown has begun. It has begun. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we did pretty well on the coronavirus thing. I mean, because that it's a tough issue, and we managed mm -hmm. to keep it fairly positive, fairly good, mm -hmm. fairly happy. We did some healing, some group healing. And I would encourage our listeners to continue doing that, especially, you know, it's a great way to, to apply mindfulness, especially mm -hmm. if you're dealing with the angst of what's going on and you're, and you're anxious about you know, what's going to happen. Every time that you notice that anxiousness, turn it around and do a little, put a little healing thing. Yeah. Put a, a little thought that, you know, you, you can just imagine. And, and you, we also have to remember there's two components to it, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's the imagining part where you imagine them getting out of bed and living their lives, but there's also the feeling component. You got to feel yes. it. Mm -hmm. You have to do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a good way to practice mindfulness. Okay. Now that I think about it, mm -hmm. you know, what better way to do it than on something that is important? Yes. Because clearly with so many people feeling so much fear about this, they're saying it's yes. important. Yes, it is important. It's very important to a lot of people. Okay, well, let's put the, the importance to use. Let's find this as a way to pivot. Yeah, if the president's going to take his time off of Twitter to make an announcement, then <laughs> it's probably important. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> fair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. Okay, <sighs> good, good stuff. Um, anything else we need to know from the land of uh, the TV factories before we go? 
Um, yes, I will say that speaking of the coronavirus, there's actually an episode of Supernatural, kind of low key about coronavirus, even though really? it was way before this was even a thing. It's called Croatoan. Okay. And it, it does bring a little humor to it because it, they jump into the future after what happens to the, with the Croatoan virus. And then one of the characters is like, you need to hoard toilet paper. Like it's like it's gold. It sounds like people have taken their advice. This is what I'm saying. I, I feel like they predicted the future, like they're the Simpsons or something. But yeah. <laughs> Actually, I don't think the toilet paper was hard to predict, but I don't want to go into that too deeply. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a belly laugh, folks. Oh, that that's was a, good a belly one. laugh. It, when it comes with a snort, it's always good. <laughs> So with that happy thought in mind, thank you, Alex, for all of your wonderful insights. You were actually the right person to do this show because you, you've dealt with anxiety issues. So thank you. You brought some really good stuff to the table. Well, I try, you know. I like you, to come prepared. You succeed. You <laughs> more than try. You succeed. So, well done. Give yourself that pat on the back. You deserve it. Okay. All right. <laughs> So thank you, Alex and Daniel. We'll look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday. Thank you to uh, our podcast listeners as well. And we will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.